Hi, my name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. Today is Sunday, June the 13th. We are almost halfway through June, which means we're pretty close to, wait for it, halfway through the year. I know, hard to believe, almost halfway through 2021. It is a beautiful sunny day where I am with temperatures that I love. So my goal is that this is not going to be a movie length anything because the sooner I get this done, the sooner I can start it uploading, which means then I get to go outside and enjoy the beautiful weather and be sunny and warm and glorious. Um, so when it actually gets up, that's a different question because I have to do the show notes, but um, we'll at least get the process started. Um, if you are a new viewer, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me, and I hope that you enjoy what you see. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and spending some time with me, and I hope you enjoy what you're seeing because you actually mostly know what you're in for. <laughs> and with that, uh, I have to say, uh, I'm thinking of everybody at StitchCon. I am totally jealous. I wish I could be there. Uh, one of these days, I really do want to go to StitchCon. Uh, I don't know that it will be 100% my kind of thing, but I'm like, you should always try things once. At least once. Do it once, and then you sort of go, you may love it, you may not love it. Um, anyway, so I would love to be at StitchCon. I'm seeing the pictures, I'm watching the things. Oh, I wish I could be there. I'm envious. Shopping? There are people going like, I like the person who is like going, I don't know that I'm going to get any stitching done while I'm there, but there will be haul next week. <laughs> I was like going, oh goody. Yeah, so StitchCon, uh, meet people, uh, shop at Keepsakes. I think they've got other vendors that are there at the convention center with them. They've got um, trunk shows from several different designers there. I don't know exactly who that is. Um, they've got the brag table. They're doing a smalls exchange. Ugh, I wish I could go. Uh, not this year for all sorts of a variety of reasons, including, you know, non-essential travel across international borders. But one of these days, I'm hoping to get to StitchCon. Anyway, in the meantime, I will wait for the videos and I'll look at the pictures on Instagram and just go, I'm totally jealous and envious of everyone who's there, whether they're at StitchCon A, which is this week. Um, and with the time zone difference, I'm sure that there are some people have already left StitchCon A, and as far as they're concerned, StitchCon A is over. Uh, some people, you know, leave right the very last minute, so I'm sure they've still got several hours left for them. Um, and Stitch Con B is next weekend, so expect next weekend on the same thing I'll be going. I'm envious of everybody who's at Stitch Con, and I wish I could be there because it will be just as much envy next week as it is this week. Anyway, uh, with all of that, uh, thank you for your comments on last week's video. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed seeing some of Jeanette's patterns. I will say that the patterns I showed are a fraction of the types of patterns that Jeanette has. Um, again, I will put a link to Jeanette's page uh, in the show notes below. So you can go right on there and you can scroll through the bajillions of patterns that she's got. They're, they're generally all fantastic in any way. I could probably stitch all Jeanette for like an entire year and love every, every minute of it. But anyway, that's not, that's not in the five-year plan. Um, I will say, um, you know, because you people make me do this. That's that's how I tell the story anyway. Because um, I was putting these, I was doing some, I don't know. As I was getting the show notes together for last week's, I was looking at the craft connection. I don't know where it came up. I was looking for something or other and it came up and they've got these. Uh, I think they've actually got a tutorial on how to make a cube. And because I had just done the video, can you imagine? So if you did a cube and you did the take time to stitch as the top part of the cube. And then you did the seasonal stitches. So the spring, summer, autumn, winter, as the four sides of the cube. Wouldn't that be amazing? Ugh, it's like going, okay, so put that in the plan that we need to do that. <clears throat> I'd have to pick a fabric 
I had a moment where I was contemplating maybe if you did a different if you did a different color for each of the seasons around the side and I went that's just too busy for me so I've already made that decision and have decided that it needs to be one fabric color for the whole tube now what color that will be that's I haven't been able to manage that decision yet but I was like oh wouldn't that be that would just be awesome and if the craft connection has a video on how to make that happen that's even better <clears throat> so that's these are these five charts are now sort of uh, residing together because I'm going these should be made into a tube anyway so thanks guys that's because you made me do whatever it was that I was doing last week I think the show notes that somehow I ended up there all right and with that uh let's get into the stitching this week we're going to start with <clears throat> I have a friend it's like it's her favorite and I'm like I'm a little worried about that the never-ending nativity here we are again um yeah still working on it but i did get my goal for this week accomplished which was important uh, ugh. Here we go. okay so my goal for this week it it won't look really dramatically different for any of you out there who are casually observing but I got all of the Krynik completed in the top two-thirds of the angel there's still more Krynik coming because we've got we've got beams down below that we've got to do so um, I haven't done any of the back stitching as you can tell so there's clearly a difference between pink angel and turquoise angel um, but everything is done. I took out that one color of DMC and I changed it so it matches what was used over here. So I, I cut it out. Uh, okay, cut it out. I ripped it out. Restitched it. I've got all of the Krynik in here in the wing. Discovered I missed four white stitches, so I solved that problem too. Uh, did that. Um, and it turned out... So it's going to be really hard to see on camera, but there's a bunch of 32 uh, Krynik blending filament around here to give her sort of a halo effect as well as in the wing. So there's a lot more stitching there than I thought there was. I was started off and I was like, okay, this won't take terribly long. And I went and it kept going and going and going and going. So anyway, and then of course I filled in all of the spots down here with the two colors of Krynik. Um, that go in there. So my goal for this week was accomplished. Um, the goal for this next week is to do the back stitching, and I'm going to say only the back stitching, because again we have a forecast that says there's going to be some glorious weather. So when there's glorious weather, there's less stitching time because I spend more time outside, and I am I cannot for the life of me stitch outside. I can't do it. I, it's not. People who can do that, I think, are fantastic. I am not one of those people. I can't. I can't manage it. Um, so when it's glorious weather, there's less stitching. There will be stitching, just less. So my goal this week for uh, the Neverending Nativity is to do the back stitching, and it's not like there's only a little bit, right? Because there's back stitching in the hair, the face, the wings, here in the body. So there's there's still it's not a ton. But I'm going, it's enough to keep me busy this week. That'll, that's my goal for this week. If I manage to get that done in super record time, trust me, there is more stitching going. But at that point, once I've done that, all we have left to do is these three, the bottom part of this, the dress for these two angels. Okay, the bottom, the bottom third of two angels, plus the beams plus the beading. So we're still not close to a finish, but we're making progress. Slow, tortoise-like, but slow, but steady progress. Uh, so again, as I said, there is, there is progress. Anyway, so there's that. Okay. And then, uh, of course, because this is Jeanette Douglas June, I'm working on my Jeanette Douglas piece, which is the um, Canadian Patriotic Sampler. Ugh, lovely. 
So this one, uh, I will say I did not get as much accomplished as I was hoping. <clears throat> not bad. So I am doing this on a 32 count pearl gray Lugana, which is not the called for fabric. Um, so last week I only had one, I had the darker color of the red for this plaid done. So I finished off the plaid. Um, it was interesting because one of my questions was going to be, so I was okay with the darker red. For the cross stitches here in the plaid, I am using one thread of the silk over two strands of fabric. Uh, so one over two for the plaid. And so one of my questions was going to be, well, it'll be interesting when we get to the black, because sometimes black is a problem, whether or not one strand over two was going to be enough, or if I felt that I was going to need that to do two over two and if that was going to look weird compared to the other ones and my answer is for me uh, the one over two with the black Gloriana was fine now again if I hold it up really close you know can you see fabric through that in in any of the three colors in the plaid and the answer is yes. And I'm okay with that because the real answer is generally, um, unless it's a stitcher who's at my house, nobody's going to be coming up really close and looking at it. So again, like so, so uh, looking at my project from here, I think that's just fine. Uh, so I finished off the plaid, including the back stitching uh, around each of these diamonds, which is done in black. And again, um, if you watched last week's video, I said uh, she's got some very clear notes in the instructions for this pattern about uh, the quarter stitches should not be done as quarter stitches. They should be done as one over one full crosses to make it fill out. And the funny thing is when I thought, um, so I, you know, so I do this color completion. So I started with the second color in here and put that in and I was putting it away and I was looking at it going like something is off and it turned out uh, figure out where to point to it turned out there see it's going to be really hard to see there's a quarter stitch there of this lighter color <laughs> and it turns out I had missed all of those on each of the diamonds so there were five of them, one, two, three, four, five, five quarter stitches that I had missed when I was doing this second color. And I'm still a little bit surprised that I noticed it, but looking at it again as I was putting it away for the night, I was like going, something is wrong there. And I had missed those five uh, quarter stitches or one over one full crosses that I needed to put in there. So then I had a big debate with myself about, eh, do I really need to put it in? Will it be noticeable? Maybe I can fudge it because then my next color was going to be the black. And I went, the black's going to screw it up. So I ended up going in and <laughs> putting in five one over one cross stitches because I'd missed them. <clears throat> anyway, I'm happy with how it looks, but I had to go back and do that. Um, so then I started on... Uh, the maple leaves in these diamonds. Now my goal was hopefully that I was going to get all of them done and I didn't get that accomplished but my goal for tonight is that before I go to bed tonight that I will get those remaining three and a stem um, completed. Uh, and then I've decided that my next, uh, I'm actually going to move on to the words, is my next one. So for these ones, for the maple leaves in the, in the centers of the diamonds, um, I am doing these using two strands of silk. So again, the model stitch for this was done on 36 count and I did try it. Um, 
I think I did a couple of stitches in, in the one and I went, uh, it's, it's not going to work out for you. And so I did this first one and I did it with two, two strands of silk as I was doing these specialty stitches, which we're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, and then I had a moment where it's like, I had a moment where I'm like, is it going to look too different? Like this is two strands, whereas everything in the plaid is only one. Maybe this is going to skew it. It's going to look too different. And so then, so I finished off the first one and then I said, uh, well, start your second one using one strand only. And I think I did about like the first six stitches in this and went, it, it was way too skimpy. It was way too skimpy. It was not going to work. It was, it like, it was very clear that on 32 count, these need to be done with two strands, period. Full stop, as far as I'm concerned. If you're doing this yourself and you're happy with the coverage of one, that's great. It's your piece too, it makes you happy. For me, this has to be two strands, period. Uh, so it was interesting. So then I was actually unstitching um, the what I had done over here with the one strand and it was really interesting because it actually left red marks in my fabric. So one, normally you should never wash your piece if you have done it with silks. Two, you should really not consider washing your piece if you've done it with silks and they're over dyes. Three, wow, I'm 100% sure that this is not color fat. Well, there's that whole thing about what color fast really means. My answer is I would be, I would be terrified to wash this in any way, shape or form because I really feel like the reds would run. Like I just, so like, I, I generally do not wash my projects at the end uh, cause I'm really good about before I even sit down to stitch that I wash my hands and I don't eat food while I'm stitching. If I have to take a break and I to have a snack then I go wash my hands again before I come back. So I don't tend to be someone who washes their projects at the end. Um, and certainly not with the silks and there's no, like there's no way this piece is ever going to get washed because I'm terrified of the reds. Now, it wasn't a problem for me because I was just ripping out something that I had stitched correctly in the right spots, but I did find it interesting that there was red, uh, that there was red marks on my fabric um, after taking that out. And that was only one strand that I was using. So. Like I'm a hundred percent sure if I pick, if I had to cut, if I had to rip this out, that my fabric would be permanent. Well, I don't know. Anyway, it's not happening. Just word to the wise. Whew, the reds on this, careful, careful, careful. This is not one where you want to be stitching this in the wrong spot. And again, it's a note to me, you know, as I move down and I'm moving into other parts um, of this pattern because there's a lot of red in this not surprisingly hi Canadian Canadian patriotic sampler red and white you know there's a lot of red in this that I have to be really really careful about my placement um, again because if you're off and you have to unstitch it there might be red marks left in my fabric so it was a really good learning lesson for me because I said as you're moving along through some of these like as I'm putting in uh, these maple leaves or how I'm setting this up, you know, careful, 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 careful. Count, 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 count again, count, 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 and then start to stitch. Uh, so that was a good uh, lesson for me. Uh, last week I, um, I was fully intending on showing this, but I couldn't find it. So my needle minder for this project is this, uh, one that says Canada True North with uh, the maple leaf on a white maple leaf on a red background. This is actually um, a needle minder that is, Jeanette Douglas has also done her Canadian patriotic snippets, which are uh, much more um, smaller ones. So you could do it, uh, there's 12 in total. So you could do it as like put all 12 together and do it as a bigger sampler, or you could just do, you know, by select ones and do them as smalls of however you chose to finish them. But she of course has some needle minders that are from that series. And this is the one that I own. So it's only, it actually was living on this piece. And so when I was recording last week, I'm like, where in the world is this? 
it's because as I was trying to get it off the Q-snaps, I wanted to take the needle minder off and put it on the ironing board because that made sense. Anyway, whatever. I, anyway, I found it. It's back on its project. So this is my Jeanette Douglas needle minder from her Canadian Patriotic Snippet series that I'm using on my Jeanette Douglas Canadian Patriotic Sampler, which I'm stitching for Jeanette Douglas June. Anybody see a theme going on here? Because I do. Anyway, uh, so that is, uh, so that's my progress for this week. Again, not quite as much as I wanted. So, but again, I'm thinking tonight it won't actually be too terribly long and I can get these all filled in. Um, then I will, tomorrow I will start working on the words. Um, but I did want to do, uh, one of the things that I said last week, uh, I was uh, said in error. Um, it's technically incorrect. It is correct how I think about things. So, uh, just trying to make sure that I... Okay, so this top band, this is where it's like going somewhere in here, is there's like, okay. So this is from the pattern. It says top band and bottom band, maple leaves in scotch, modified Milanese, and cashmere stitches. So technically, apparently, according to the chart, <laughs> So these maple leaves here are using three different specialty stitches. When I said last week, I said these maple leaves are done in satin stitches. In my head, that's how I think about them. Even now, I'm, I think of these and go, they're satin stitches. The technical names of them are Scotch Modified Milanese I don't know how it's modified, um, and cashmere stitches. Now, it's going to be really hard to see. So when I do these, like, so in the centers, yeah, I don't know that you're going to be able to see this. So in the centers of these, because I do know what the scotch, scotch stitch is. So a scotch stitch uh, ends up looking like a square you stitch it on the diagonal, which is why I go, it's it's a satin stitch. So you start with a satin stitch diagonally over one thread, over two threads, over three threads, over four threads, over three, over two, over one. And so that's how I think about them. So I don't, I in my head, that one I know is called the Scotch stitch, but I go, it's a satin stitch diagonally. Over one, over two, over three, over four, over three, over two, over one. Ta-da. Now, um, if you would like me to show that to you in a diagram, just throw that in the comment section down below. I'm more than happy to do that next week. But this is why I say nobody should be worried about specialty stitches. And that's why in my head, I, I would never have been able to have, without reading this, have been able to tell you that it's Scotch stitch modified Milanese and cashmere. Again, I don't really know what the modified Milanese is. I probably should figure that out. And I don't really know what the cashmere stitch is. Eh, anyway, because I go, it's all satin stitch. So I think some of it's just like, some of it's diagonal going to the left. Maybe it's diagonal going to the right. Anyway, like, like I say, the scotch stitch to me is satin stitch. Over one, over two, over three, over four, three, two, one, diagonally. Done. So that's how I think about them. Um... And again, Jeanette has fantastic stitch diagrams in her chart. So I won't show you the stitch diagram, but I will say this page that I'm holding up for you, this part of the page is the stitch diagram for the maple leaf. Now, it's not entirely numbered. I mean, it only, it only gives you the first numbers up to up it only takes you up to 48 and it says if, if you can get through the first the first 48 you can probably figure out the rest on your own without having them numbered but she's got arrows on here so you know exactly which direction you should be stitching these in like again this is why 
fan, Jeanette, fantastic stitch diagrams, right? So, hi, here's the chart. Here is, here is something that requires specialty stitches. She's using this much of the page to show you what that maple leaf should look like. So, which is why I go, you should not be worried about specialty stitches in any of Jeanette's charts, period, bar none. Don't let them wig you out. Don't, don't, don't. They're all fine. So again, I'm just going to hold it up again because I like how it's coming along. And again, here's the... So this is the current color palette because I haven't gotten into the parts that I'm changing yet. I love how it's looking on the gray. Uh, so next week you'll be able to see I will have had to have made my final decision about which gray I'm using to do the words in because uh, we're going to start that next week. So yeah. Yeah, anyway. We'll see how far I get next week. Um, yeah, because there's. I'm hoping within the next 10 days I will start to hit the, the spots where I'm starting to change the pattern. <laughs> yeah. Couple of that, so one of the things that's going to come up fairly quickly is one where I've actually got a chart what I want to do. So, so that's one of the things that goes into the list of things that I need to do this week. So I actually need to chart something out. But anyway, that will slow down the actual stitching, but it will be good for the project. Okay, and with that, that's all the stitching I've done this week. Again, we'll see how far I get on my stitching this next week because if there's going to be like four glorious days, Judy's going to need to be spending some time outside. All right, and with that, the topic for this week are things that I take, uh, what did I say I was gonna call this? Let's talk um, traveling with stitching or something like that. Who knows, <laughs> when you see, you'll know what I've decided the name for this is. And while I was thinking about what I was gonna cover this week, I went, you know, it's an interesting question because what I take when I'm taking my stitching depends on what I'm taking it to. So, if I'm going to stitch for an evening, an afternoon, a day with friends locally is one thing. There's some tweaks to that if I am going somewhere where it's a multi-day retreat. Again, where it's just stitching, but it's a multi-day retreat. As opposed to if I'm going to something that's a class versus if I'm taking something internationally. So those are actually different things. So this topic may come up again because I may do a couple of different versions of this, not all back to back because, you know, that would be boring. But um, over the next couple of months, sort of over the summer, I may, I may do a couple more episodes of things that I'm doing if I'm doing some of those other versions. So the focus for what I'm going to show you in this week's topic are the things, if I'm going to stitch with friends locally, here and so whether it's for two hours or 12 hours so not multi-day this is kind of the things that I these are the things that I think about and these are the things that I generally take with me I just had a moment like I was going to show the bag but the bag's not in the room so we'll skip that part so um one for me uh so I have watched someone who said so first of all everything has to be cute and the answer is, if you have the cute things and you like the cute things, take the cute things. If you don't have the cute things, you can be like me and not take the cute things. If you're bringing your project in a Ziploc bag, that's great because you're coming. That's the most important thing. Um, you all have seen my stuff, my project bags. Do I even have a project bag near me? No. Um, I don't have, I have, a, I have a couple of really cute project bags. I certainly don't keep all of my projects in cute project bags. I get my bags off of Amazon. I've put that in the links below. And you know, if ever if everybody else that I go where I'm going has a cute project bag, I think that's great. It doesn't matter. I came with my project in my project bag and that's okay too. So don't let any, if anybody says those things where you've got to show up with X, Y, and Z, it has to be cute and pretty and all those kinds of things, forget that. No, that's not true. The most important thing is that you go. Present is more important than cute. If you've got the cute and you love the cute, that's great. The problem when you go to these things is you see 47 other things, which means you go like, oh, maybe I need that. 
So again, the stitch con things. I have to make one more purchase while I'm off my bandwagon. I was watching somebody on their Instagram story and I was like, oh, I might need one of those. Anyway, <laughs> check back later in the purchase section. Okay, but let's get on with it. So one of the number one things that is a consideration for me is know where you're going. Know what the setup's going to be because that can change what you need to take. Um, again, so the group of stitchers that I usually stitch with when we go to each other's houses, we've been to each other's houses before, so we know what, what, what the setup is, um, you know, what your seating options are, what your lighting options are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, when the stitchers, when my stitchy friends come over to my place, it's funny because some of them come and sometimes it takes them uh, anywhere from two to four trips to the car to get their stuff out. That's them. That makes them happy. If it, that's okay for them and I have no issues with that. Um, when I go traveling to my friends, everything that I need to take with me fits into one bag because that's my preference. Um, I show up with my, my one bag. So what that does mean is I usually don't take big projects. So for example, the never ending nativity would never go with me when I'm going to stitch with my friends. One, because I would need a stand uh, to make it convenient for me. Two, I just, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this takes up too much space. This is, it's a personal choice. Um, there are other people who will show up with things on, well, I don't know that I'm thinking of a friend's wedding. I don't think anybody's ever showed up with scroll rods that are that long. But, you know, um, a, a table stand, bring your, bring your table stand if you want. Again, for me, the problem is, is that my table, my table stand is bigger so I would find it hard to travel with, so I don't tend to do that. So what it means is I, for me, the decision for me is if I'm going to stitch with friends, I take a project that can fit on a Q-snap. Um, so generally this is the size of Q-snap. If it fits on here, uh, this is the size of project I'm taking. So again, so um, as I said, this is gonna turn into a multi-episode thing over time. So one of the things that I'm gonna show you is in my bag. So I always have more than one project in my bag. Um, and so one of the episodes is gonna be, here's the projects that I've got kitted up sitting in my bag just waiting. Anyway, um, but I always, so for me, my decision is I only take things that I work on at Q-Snap. Just cause I think it's more compact. It's easier to travel with. I don't have to take a stand. I don't have to take other things. So I don't have to take other equipment with me. Um, and so that's why my choice is to go with this. And the lighting has just changed dramatically because the sun has gone behind a cloud, which is why I'm like, going, wow, that looks really different on the screen. Mm, here it comes again. Anyway, well, welcome to weather. When the sun comes out, I blow out. Anyway, whatever. So that's my decision for me. So for example, so the never ending nativity would not ever come with me while I'm going to stitch with friends. Um, Canadian patriotic sampler absolutely is the size of project that I would take when I'm doing that. Um, so that's, and again, that's my choice for me. Um, so that's what I do. Okay. So one of the things that I take, and I've got, I didn't think this through on the table. So let's see how many things fall apart while I'm trying to extract this. Okay this. So this is, um, again, um, if I am traveling where I'm, wherever I'm traveling, if I'm going in a car, this comes with me. Um, I saw this, so this is courtesy of Stitcherista. Several years ago, she showed this. She, she's, I don't know where she found it. She showed it. I was like, oh my goodness, that's the best thing ever. Um, I got it off of Amazon. There will be a link to this product in the notes below. It comes in multiple colors. You don't have to do this. I chose a brightly colored one because the goal was like, you should be able to see it in a room and find it. Um, so this is like, even if the, if my stitching friends are coming to my house and they need to plug in their lights, this is what I use. Cause it means I only have to run one extension cord 
um, up onto the table where we're stitching because this particular gem has two, four, six, eight, eight plugins. So eight people can plug in their lights if they've got standard ones. Um, it does have, um, uh, what's that thing to prevent? Like, so if there's a surge protector, so there is a surge protector built into this. It also comes with four USB ports. So if somebody needs to charge their phone, their iPad, their tablet, um, I'm gonna show you in just a second. I've got a lamp here that um, charges via a USB cord. Um, so I've got eight regular plugins, four USB ports, surge protected, all of the good stuff here. Um, again, so I, I think this is great because because one, when you've got, you know, we've done my stitching group when we've done this before, it's like we tend to have a lot of lights and all sorts of things and the cords on the table get a little out of control. When I discovered this, I'm like, this is the best thing ever because you can put this in the center of the table and everybody can plug into here. It just sort of, so for me, it's just cord containment and then you don't have to have um, extension cords coming from multiple outlets to get, you know, so if you've got eight people sitting at your table, right? Um, my other extension cords, like I don't have enough plug-in space for them. So I think this is, I love this thing. Love, love, love this thing. And again, I got it in a bright color so I can spot it easily. <laughs> That's why. All right. And it's relatively portable. It's not, it's not gigantic, right? So yeah, love this thing. I don't know how long I'm going to do it, how I sort this out. Okay, let's talk about lights. So I do take lights with me. So historically, this is the light um, that I have most frequently taken. Um, so it is an aught light. So this is an aught light. I got a version where it does have a battery in it so you can charge it up. Um, so you could run it off of the battery as opposed to needing to plug it in. Again, um, the places where I've gone, sorry, I'm just going to plug it in because I don't remember the last time I charged it up. <laughs> um, so the last, you know, um, one, so this is what it, so it just, so it opens like this, lights up. Um, so for me, it's got enough room where it can hang over the area where I am working. Um, it doesn't take up too much space. Um, so again, I've got, so I've actually got two of these. I got, my first one was one where it didn't have a battery. Um, and then when I discovered that they had ones where you, it has a battery and you could plug it in and charge it. And so it could run off the thing. I got one of those two. Anyway, and I have had friends where now again, when they're coming to stitch at my house, they've met me. <laughs> so they know, like I've had, I've had a friend who was like, oh man. I knew I was coming over, I forgot my light. And the answer is like, great, I've got more than white, one light here, here you go, right? So um, anyway, like at my house, I can use my regular light and I all of my travel lights are free for anybody to borrow while they're here if they forgot theirs. Okay, so that's one of my lights. So this is a new, uh, acquisition uh when did i get this so this is in december i bought this towards the end of december so after christmas it was a boxing day sale so i have a halo go people have been talking about them and talking about them and talking about them and these are not cheap these are not cheap and so that was a big hindrance for me where I looked at it and I'm like, it's really expensive. It's really expensive. You have these other lights. Don't be ridiculous. You don't need another light. And I stumbled across, so between the week and between Christmas Day and New Year's Day on Amazon, I was doing, <laughs> I think I was on Amazon because again, I think Auntie Sharon gave me that gift card. So I was on Amazon. And this the, so halo go was on my wish list and i was looking at it and i clicked on it and you know it was just like usually it's the prices it was on sale 
And then there was another additional $20 off that particular week. And at that point, I was like, okay, this is, it was the cheapest price I'd ever seen for a Halo Go in Canadian dollars. It came with free shipping. So I bought it. Um, I have used it at home a little bit. Um, even at home, I've used it a little bit. Not a lot because I have that light that I showed you the last time but I have used it a little bit. So one of the things about this is one, is it, so it does have a battery. One, it does have a magnifier light. So um, as I talked about in my previous video for magnifiers, covered, 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 because they are a fire hazard. Safety first. And so even though this comes with, um, so this is where the magnifier is. Even though this comes with a cover, I'm paranoid about magnifiers and thingies. So even with that, I still use a little baggie. So when you see this in my house, it looks like this. Now, I have a friend who's explained to me that I need to one of these days go to one of the knitting stores because apparently there's a case for knitting needles that is the perfect size for a Halo Go. <clears throat> so I'll need to I'll need to investigate that. Anyway, so this um, so it has a magnifier. Um, it comes with two levels of brightness. So so that's off. So this is the brightest. Again, it's a sunny day, so this isn't going to show the best. Um, but I do think it's it's a decent level of brightness. Uh, if it's too bright for you, there's one notch down. So this is chargeable. It's got a battery. So right now I'm running it cordless, which again is great. Um, that's going to, so depending on where you're going, there are certain, there are certain retreats that you can go to where you're not going to be able to plug in lights. So this is why this is like hmm, interesting. So I like this. So it charges up, uh, it charges up with a USB cord. So again, for that, for my plug-in thing, like so, if I were taking this light, it I would be able to plug it into one of these USB ports to keep it charged up. Or if I was sitting at a table for some reason with ten people and there was a problem with phones, I could still run this off the battery. So this um, angles, like it angles all the way down to here, which makes it, which as does the top part, right? So that's really portable, really, really portable. So you can get any angle you want um, this way. This, of course, you can position any angle. And then this part rotates as well. So I go, I think there's a lot of flexibility here. Um, again, I haven't taken this anywhere outside of my own home to use it. So I haven't tried it that part, but again, I bought it, you know, like that's pretty far. <laughs> anyway, I bought it because um, people have been raving about them and how portable they are and great. And I liked, again, because I've, um, some of the uh, retreat concepts that I have in my head of things that I would like to do, um, very, from the people that I know that have gone to them, you do not necessarily have access to a plug-in right? So your light options, you have to assess based on that. And I figured this would give me, um, you know, it would certainly, it may not be able to do, you know, eight hours of stitching, um, but it would certainly give me many hours. Um, and then I could go, you know, set it to plug in and do something. So that was, uh, and again, uh, I think you've noticed for me, it's like shop around, shop around. So this was on my wish list you know, for a long time there, after people were talking about them, like, it's too expensive, don't spend the money, it's not worth it. Um, again, I totally fluked into um, this deal on Amazon. So, and again, I wasn't even looking for it. I was in my wish list because I had Auntie Sharon's gift card. <laughs> I went, I have my Halo. It was, hey, with a, with a, dis, with a discount, with an additional coupon, that's when I said yes. So... I, I'm glad that I have it. I think it gives me lots of options. And again, 
um, as things start to reopen and I may be able to travel and I may be able to go to some of these retreats that I want to go to, I think this is a fantastic, fantastic option for me for traveling. It certainly weighs less than my battery op operated Ot light. It's certainly way less. It packs. Um, so I have a friend in Ontario. She's got a beautiful home on a lake. Uh, hopefully towards the end of August, September, I'll be able to go and spend some time out there. Right. And again, so that's just, you know, kicking back at the lake. This is my, this is the light that I would plan on taking with me if I were going there, if I get to go there this year, which I really hope, I really hope later this summer I get to go. It would be great. I haven't been there yet. 2019, I was there. It's glorious. Anyway, <sighs> traveling, traveling days are coming. Here we go. Anyway, so if I were going back to my friends in Ontario to, to go spend some time at her house on the lake, this is the light that I would take. Okay, but in my bag, so in my stitching, my travel bag, it's my travel go bag, um, I like to call it. That'll come up in a different discussion about your need for go bags. So largely, I've got a bag set up that if anybody phoned and said, oh my goodness, can you come stitch right now? Um, it would be very easy for me to just grab this bag and go. Um, whether or not there's anything in the schedule is a, a completely different issue. So the other light that I keep in there, and I really should do a better job of checking the batteries. So Mighty Bright. So again, I got this off of Amazon. Um, I was like, I am 100% sure that I did not. Yeah, I took the batteries out. Okay. So I can't show you how bright this is, but for me, again, for a travel light, this is a good level of brightness for me. Um, it is battery operated. Whoops. So I've got three in here, but I feel like it only takes two, but it might be three. Uses three. <laughs> Read the instructions. So three uh, AAA batteries, which is what I keep in here, which I go, I should probably check and see if they're still functioning. Because I haven't used it in so long. But for me, the thing is this is that it's got this really big clip. And again, um, because generally I'm taking things that fit onto a Q snap. This oops, doesn't work well when you're trying to adjust it when you the battery cover comes off. Okay. So for me, the way, okay, it works better when I'm stitching because I'm usually stitching like this <laughs> as opposed to holding it up, right? So when I'm stitching like this, um, this works just fine. And you can angle it again because it's got a, a gooseneck here, right? So I can angle it straighter or forward or angled or whatever. I've got all of this flexibility as to what's happening here. Um, and the angle that it's at. Um, and so I have that in my bag as well. Right, so if for whatever reasons, we ran out of plugs, the battery on, it, on my lights died, I have a backup. Um, and so this is, and again, this is really um, travel friendly. Um, so it folds up and it stores in this bag. Right, so this lives in my Stitchy Go bag all the time. Although I should really check to see if the batteries still work in this thing. Anyway, so those are my lights. Okay, a couple of not exactly Stitchy related things. I've talked about this before. Um, in my bag, I always have a, a thing of post-it notes and a pen. One, uh, this always makes, if for whatever reason, I'm starting something new and I'm, uh, this is three by three. So this makes a really great corner gauge. It also means when you see somebody working on something where you're like, oh my goodness, that is a fantastic project. I need that. You've got something to write it down so you can remember by the time you get home. 
I usually can't remember it by the time that I go out to get the snack. So if you see it, you write it down. Or if somebody's working with a fiber or where you're like, oh my goodness, that's fantastic. I, I can see me using that for something else. Write down the fiber. Um, you can write down fabric if your friend's working on a fabric, right? So this usually happens that people are talking about something or people are talking about things that they're reading or watching or anything. You need to have something you can where you can make a note. So there's always a, a thing of post-it notes and a pen in my bag because invariably I have to write something down while I'm there. I know lots of people keep it on their phones and all that stuff. I, I write notes. I'm elderly, don't forget. Okay, so I also have this little bag. Um, this keeps random things in it just for containment purposes. So I always have extra needles. And in fact, I laugh because I just went really. The ones that are currently sitting in my bag are these ones. So I've got a beading needle. I've got size 28 John James. I've got two packages of those. So um, not that you should be anxiously trying to lose needles, but the worst thing is when you show up and you don't have a needle. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're stitching with friends, usually somebody else has some. But for me, I always have extra packets of needles in my bag with me. And again, I have this little, this little bag here because it fits all these little things. So I showed these scissors because these are really great travel scissors because, you know, if I lose them, it doesn't really matter. Here are my travel scissors uh, that come complete with their own safety point. The funny thing when I was hauling this stuff out is I went, so remember I showed these, these needle grippers? These come as a set of two, but there's only one in my bag. I don't know where the other one is. <laughs> Put it somewhere special? Anyway, if nothing else, there's at least one in the bag. Um, I also have... Um, a friend of mine, she, so this is from a, a store here that's actually for things where people woodworking and things. And she saw them and she went, forget whatever that's supposed to be used for. This can be used for stitching. Um, so it's just a little gain. Like, so if you've ripped, if you've ripped something out, you've had to frog something and you've got a little bit of fuzz left on your thing, um, you can just brush it up with this. So I don't know what this is called. I know where she, I know where she got it, but, um, I don't know that that's necessary. It's a store where I live. I don't know that it's necessary. It's not really a chain, I don't think. Um, but again, so this is just uh, to pick up fuzz. All right. I also have, um, I also keep uh, a ruler. So this is my Ann Morrison ruler that I got for my Ann Morrison sampler chart from Traditional Stitches in celebration of their 20th anniversary. So I actually keep my Ann Morrison ruler in my bag with me. Now, it will fit in here, but I do have another bag of, again, it contains things. I do also have another bag to keep other things in. Um, again, I think this is a gift from my mother. Again, I just have more, more needles in here. Um, the thing that usually resides in this bag though are if I'm again if I'm doing local stitching I have a pair of scissors that I take for stitching um, and this is them so you haven't seen these ones before uh, so they're stork ones I don't even know which brand these are they're decently sharp they of course have to go live with a cover um, but for me, the big the big deal about these ones is that this is a pair of scissors that I have that has a long scissor flop on it. And the reason why I encourage you for your traveling scissors to put a fob on it of some kind is because when you're stitching and there's eight of you at a table, trust me, there's going to be anywhere from eight to 12 pairs of scissors out. It's always great for you to look down and go, these are mine. So for me, this is just uh, my ability to mark my scissors and tell them apart from anybody else's. Um, 
you know, because it wouldn't be unheard of in my stitching group to have somebody else who has this ex exact same sheath cover. It wouldn't be uncommon for somebody to have a pair of stork scissors. So for me, this is in a group, this is my ability to tell my scissors apart from anybody else's. So again, you haven't seen these scissors in the other ones that I do because these scissors live in my stitchy go bag. They, they actually don't come out while I'm stitching at home. These live in that bag. I've also got things like I showed these ones before. You know, I've just got ones where if I have to do counting or pick something out, this lives in my bag. Um, I've also got one of these. We talked about these before. This is my Oort uh, container just to put my threads in, contain the garbage while I'm stitching somewhere else. Um looking over here oh yeah uh, a couple of uh, needle threaders because I need those uh, needle minder I always have a needle minder but that usually I have a needle minder that lives on the project that I'm taking with me um, so that's generally what I take when I'm going to stitch you know again with a stitchy group from anywhere from 2 to 12 hours now, I will fully acknowledge I try not to pack heavy. I try to pack, pack a little bit lighter for those ones. Um, every Again, everything that I take with me fits into a bag, which I really wish I remembered to bring it into this room, but I didn't. You'll see that. Again, it's a, it's not a huge bag. It's, it's a decent-sized bag, but it's not bad. For me, the thing about the bag is that it has a zipper at the top, um, just because I like to be able... You know, hey, when you get a group of people, they're all sitting around, we're trying to move around tables and do things. Invariably, somebody kicks something over. I, it's usually me, or, along with probably several of the people in the group that I stitch with. We're usually terrible about running into the bags. So for me, I always like to have one that has a zipper across the top, just because if anybody runs into it or knocks it over, it usually means everything's contained in there and I don't have to, you know, go put everything back. Um, but that's me. Um, I've certainly got friends in the group where they have the, again, they do big ones where they sit square, they don't have zippers across the top, so that's just a personal, that's a for me thing, that's the bag that I've got, zipper across the top, that's me. But with that, I think that's, that covers that. So generally that's what I take in my bag, um, my Stitchy Go bag, like I say, I've always got, there's multiple projects in there that are kitted up, ready to go. Some of which have been started, some of which have not been started, um, but we'll do that. We'll do we'll do another round of these in July, and we'll talk about the things the the things that I've got kitted up in my stitchy go bag. As things are starting to open up, we're going to get to a point where we're going to be able to get together and stitch again where I am. Yay! It's coming. Nice weather, summer stitching. Anyway. And with that, I hope everybody has a great week. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, uh, find some time to do some stitching. Um, as always, if you've got any comments, questions, concerns, um, things that you'd like me to talk about, please feel free to put those in the comments down below. I'm happy to do answer answer questions, address comments, talk about topics that you'd like me to talk about. Um, again, today's topic was courtesy of Barb, Barbara, Barb, Barbara B. Um, ooh, that reminds me, Denise Jeffries. I was doing some organizing and I found the chart. It has been put in the mail to you, finally. I know, it took forever and a day. I clearly put it somewhere really, really special. <laughs> it's taken me a year to find the chart. Anyway, Denise, I have got the chart. It is in the mail to you. Welcome to the mail system. Who knows how long it's going to take to get to you. But if nothing else, I have found it. I've actually posted it. It's on its way to you. It will be arriving to you at some point, hopefully in the next four to six weeks. Thank you for your patience and your understanding. <laughs> I've been waiting all this time, but it's finally on its way to you. Uh, and with that, I hope everybody has a great week. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care, guys.